we are excited to have you all here for the first live webinar for the online MBA program. I'm sure all of you have many questions for us and it shows it also shows in the tremendous response that we have received for our webinar, not just from India, but across the globe. Thank you for taking time out from your busy schedules to join us this evening. Well, we'll just get on with the webinar now. Hello. I'm Rashmi Sadanandan in charge of the online MBA program. Today, I'm joined here by our program chairperson, Professor Joshi Jacob and Professor MP Ram Mohan, who manages the admissions for the program. Okay, a small brief on our program. So the online, the, our program was launched last month, February, 2024. It's designed specifically for working professionals who are looking for an academic upskilling without disrupting your workspace, your professional work life. We are, we'll gain more insights into the program as we progress. I'll now pass on the baton to our prof chairperson, Professor Joshi Jacob and Professor M.P. Ram Mohan. Sirs. Thank you, Reshmi. A warm welcome to all those who have joined uh, here. Good afternoon, good evening, uh, good morning, depending on the time zone where you are. Uh, I'll just uh, quickly take you through the overview of the program. And my colleague, uh, Professor M.P. Ramohan, shall take you through the some details of the admissions process. Okay. Um, as we know that uh, IMA has launched this program uh, on account of two changes in the environment. One we know is that there is increasing societal acceptance for online education. And uh, the questions about online being as effective is uh, no more so much of a concern. That's one change. Second is as an institute, uh, faculty and the infrastructure is now geared to deliver this program as much effectively as we could do for a physical program. So therefore, we think time is really right to have a program like this so that we have global reach uh, as an institute. And as participants, you have the best uh, institute available with uh, significant uh, involvement uh, in business and policy making in India. Okay, And uh, this program, we call this is online MBA and the degree awarded shall be called Masters in Business Administration. The I'll just give you a glimpse of exactly what is a statement that will appear on your degree certificate. It will be called uh, as a, you have completed a two year blended mode postgraduate program in management. The degree awarded shall be called Masters in Business Administration. Uh, this is the format of the certificate that it will be, okay? So it's a postgraduate program offered on blended mode, leading to award of degree, masters in business administration by IMA. And uh, let me quickly give you an overview of the structure. As you are aware, the program has a total of uh, 36 credits, uh, which is a unit of measurement of how much academic input goes into any program at IMA. 36 credits means that there are 720 sessions equivalent of academic work, which is converting into clock time 900 hours. They are equally spread between the two years, 18 credits in first year and 18 credits in the second year. Uh, you can see that in the first year we have 18 credits, but uh, they are all compulsory courses. There is no choice that we are providing at that point in time. Uh, 0.5 credits equivalent is the induction program that we call it, where you would actually be taken through various group exercises uh, as part of understanding organizational behavior, so therefore, half a credit is for that. The rest of the courses are actually what we call as core courses. Uh, I'll actually detail a little bit of that uh, it, later in the presentation. Then that would be the first year would end up with a summer project. The summer project is actually meant to you know, involve you with application of concepts that you have learned in the first year. In second year, it is, it is all flexible. Most of it, you can choose courses from a set of uh, you know focal points based on your taste and preference and how you want to really build your career or how you want to leverage your existing career. I'll talk about it as well a little late. We have a small core course there, which is actually trying to integrate your learnings into, uh, you know, into a cohesive format. Uh, that's the overall structure of the program, 900 sessions, say 720 sessions equal in 900 hours. That's standard for any MBA program. So this program, in terms of rigor and focus is, is exactly like any other MBA that we are actually offering. And uh, an overview of the courses. Um, 
the core courses uh, cover a gamut of things like environment of the business. We know that economic environment has a strong impact. Social cultural and environment has an impact. So one set of courses focuses on understanding the environment in a nuanced manner. Another set of courses are actually focused on decision making frameworks, grounded in economic theory, grounded in behavior, grounded in you know game theoretic approach. So all kinds of decision making framework, including probabilistic decision making, is actually part of those courses. Uh, another set of core courses focus on leadership and organizational behavior because we know that without understanding people, we hardly are effective. Uh, bulk also focuses on functional core, finance, marketing, HR, and so on. Right. So that's what the core is. And uh, the core is followed by the group of electives. And uh, just to give you an overview, the electives uh, are actually focused on in multiple dimensions. One set of electives give you exposure to what we call as the traditional deep down. It could be like, oh, yeah, you are a finance uh, professional. You want to understand finance in more detail. You want to understand valuation, mergers and acquisitions. You want to understand entrepreneurial finance. There is a deep down of finance. Similarly, there is a deep down of marketing, HR and strategy and so on. So they are actually focused on functional levels. We have another set of electives which are actually focused at the industry level, and they could be focusing on, let's say, someone focuses on technology industry, someone focuses on healthcare, someone focuses on public sector. So there are industry-focused bunch of electives that you can choose. There are a set of electives which gives a richer understanding of the decision tools, such as you know artificial intelligence, machine learning, and decision-making frameworks, let's say, based on Bayesian approach, and so on and so forth. Uh, we have a bunch of electives which would give you significant exposure to the whole gamut of entrepreneurship, including leadership and uh, softer aspects of entrepreneurship to raising finance through different stages of a firm and then finally exiting and so on. So you can really, if you take those set of electives, you can well say that you have a fair amount of understanding of how entrepreneurship works. Uh, throughout this entire bunch of courses that we do, both core courses and electives, our focus is clearly on applications. IMA had been always pioneering the effort to focus on applied learning rather than concepts in isolation and without really context. So this is achieved through what we call as case learning, where we draw out the approach to solve a problem from the participants based on their understanding of the concepts and based on their contextual knowledge. And in the process of uh, using these cases, we'll cover a gamut of industries such as manufacturing services, technology, infrastructure, utilities, and nonprofits, and so on. So therefore, broadly, first year is core courses, second year is electives with significant flexibility, and everything focuses on applied learning rather than just learning it for the sake of theory. Uh, now, uh, we know that the uh, program has opportunity for application of your learning in multiple ways. One is through the cases that are part of the coursework, the other is we have projects designed as part of the coursework itself. Specific courses would actually give you group projects and individual projects to work on, which is application. But beyond that, we also have designed into the program uh, projects. One project is actually what we call a summer project, which is between first year and second year. Ideally, you should actually focus on an issue which is in your organization, in your work domain, which you are dealing with. And if everything falls in place with the with the consent of your employer, you could really work out to solve it. Of course, you may actually deal with sensitive data, but you can anonymize it and still work on the problem. So we want to really make sure that you are actually able to take the concepts and marinate it with the context and evolve with a reasonable solution, right? Uh, in addition to the summer project, which is equivalent of 50 hours of work or two course equivalent, you also have the opportunity to choose additional one credit project in the second year based on your choice. It could be individual or it could be group-wise. All projects are going to be supervised partly by the faculty. And therefore, this is, this is meant to really multiply your learnings. Let me take you to the other lever of this program. Unlike other programs which have heavy focus on only online content and online approach of uh, imparting and learning, we actually have significant uh, content which is focused on on-campus uh, sessions. The on-campus sessions um, uh, are actually not necessarily, oh yeah, you have 20% credit uh, coming off from the on-campus sessions just mechanically, no. 
we are choosing elements of pro courses which are actually which are actually going to benefit significantly when you are physically here in on campus uh, for example if there is a negotiation that you have as part of a as part of a deal that you have to do then that negotiation is better done or best done when the participants are actually present in the classroom or there is an ethical dilemma that we have to deal with in a negotiation how will you actually deal with that so all elements of courses where we strongly believe that your presence and personal interaction and seeing the emotions on the face as it flies is important that would actually be done when you are actually on campus also during the campus visit you get really access to see the facilities like for example we have a behavioral lab here we have different equipments which can really measure the psycho neuro response neural psycho neuro, neurophysical response i'm sorry of the participants uh, engaged in a game or responding to a certain situation you can immerse yourself doing some experiments there you can interact with uh, the center for uh, you know innovation uh, and entrepreneurship what we call a ci we have an ecosystem of vibrant uh, you know to support the startup uh, and enterprises you could really engage with them and figure out how they are working you could explore the opportunity to further your entrepreneurship motives um, interact with faculty interact with you know alumni from other programs and so on all of that could be facilitated on campus so therefore we don't intend to use the campus module as just another you know part of the course but a more vibrant uh you know experience for all of you so that the learning is memorable and uh, fun to deal with uh so as part of this program we would actually engage with the ima network particularly our alumni and uh, other influential you know um, network nodes as part of ima uh, to further your career goals uh, particularly your learning understanding of the whole ecosystem and connect to resources um so we target to really become one of the top 10 programs in what we call as the online mba category in the world that's the target that we have set uh, mm -hmm. and uh, if you talk about if uh, you know placement support we do not directly provide placement support as we do for the programs which are actually where candidates come off to leave the job and be on campus uh, but the participants are free to further your career uh through promotion of your uh, profile using the official handles of the institute of the program such as the media page and so on so you are free to really promote your career we don't really discourage you from doing it but being working professionals you know declaring that we will provide you know employment support straight away could actually be something which i think is or we think is not necessarily in the interest of the program which is targeted for working professionals uh the program calendar and the schedule uh, very quickly the mechanical part um we know that the program is actually organized into six trimesters we call them as terms 80% of the credit is online and 20 on campus the sessions are live and uh, direct to device mode uh, that's where our partner vc now comes in uh, the program is the pre mba program will begin in august what we call as you know some early credits accounting and some quantitative methods courses you have to learn before you come to the program but the program officially begins on 1st september uh and the campus module is for 1st september from 1st september to 7th september the first uh, term will end on december 22nd we will take a break for one roughly one week until jan 1 second module would actually begin on 2nd jan and will go till march 31 right and then we have another break and then we have the summer project which is roughly 3 weeks then second year we would go like this the approximate the, the actual number of campus sessions are we will have seven sessions in term 1 five sessions in term 2 and term 3 so 17 session 17 days i'm sorry 17 days on in the first year and 13 days in second year which is 5 5 5 5 5 and 3 in the three terms of second year all right sunday the session starts at 10:20 to 11:35 p am one session however we keep one slot for an extra session in case of required it could be an exam it could be an interaction with an alumni it could be an industry interaction it could be a group activity that you have to do so we reserve that slot but not necessarily every sunday we will have class uh, every week uh, so therefore uh, we can say officially seven sessions plus is the weekly schedule that you would actually have okay and uh, for the admissions related uh, presentation i 
invite Professor Ankira. So we uh, are looking at working professionals who are eager to learn. So that's the first criteria. Uh, the eligibility is a graduate uh, degree, uh, bachelor's degree. If you are a professional, you can come from CA, Chartered Accountancy, Company Secretaryship, ICWA. That leaves 50% marks in aggregate or equivalent GPA from a, any recognized university. So that's the criteria. In terms of age, minimum age required is 24 and above. Uh, how does the admission uh, process of, uh, work? We, we plan it as a simple method. We have three stage uh, uh, admission uh, setup. One is the admission test. We uh, require you to either take CAT, GMAT, GRE, or our own IMA admission test. Uh, second, uh, based on your professional experience, uh, we will evaluate you. And finally, once you have both admission test scores and professional experience score, we will uh, do an interview. These three components broadly cover how you enter IMA's online MBA program. Yeah, we, we are over to okay. Q&A yeah. session now. Yeah, Thank you, okay. Uh, yeah, as far as uh, Q&A is concerned, the request of participants to use the hand raise option and uh, we'll uh, uh, allow you to ask your questions. Uh, okay, let us go to Saurabh Kumar Ja. Saurabh Kumar Ja, I'm unmuting you, you can... Uh, thank you, Professor. This is a very nice initiative from Ahmedabad. My concern is that I am based in Netherlands and I would really like to pursue this program. And how do you conduct the uh, internal test that you have? Is it online or, or is it in the campus, the uh, competitive test that you have instead of GMAT and uh, CAT? All right, Saru, thank you for joining. Uh, for international candidates, we are expecting you to have either GMAT or GRE. Only candidates based in Gulf, we are facilitating an online test uh, in Dubai. All other international candidates, we expect you to write GMAT or GRE. However, you have the option to go to Dubai and take our uh, admissions test. Uh, in case directly. it's possible yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, can we request uh, Gaurav Walia? Uh, hi, so good evening. Um, thank you very much for conducting the session. I just had a question on the exam IAT. Uh, would it be similar to GMAT or CAT? Uh, good question again. Uh, it, it won't be as tough as GMAT and GRE that we, we can ensure. Uh, it will have three components. One is to test your quantitative aptitude. Second is verbal ability. And third is analytical reasoning. So we are expecting that each session of the questions would, would contain 15 questions for each session and total of 90 minutes. So okay, uh, the, the syllabus would be 10 and 12th uh, you know, uh, class. Uh, we are not expecting anything more than that. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. And one more question. Uh, so this, the shortlisting of candidates would be based on IAT exam plus the professional experience as well as the interview, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir, so much. Yeah, there, is, there are some direct messages on chat, uh, Reshmi. It is, uh, I'm seeing it here. It will not be visible to you. Uh, there is a question. Uh, is, there, uh, the, is the campus component mandatory to attend? And there's um, a follow-up question by the same candidate. Are you open to considering applicants with 20 plus years of experience after a prior MBA done many years of, uh, uh, before? So the campus module is mandatory because we think that, uh, you know, it, that experience is something really hard to be substituted, uh, you know, through online. Um, so on the question of, you know, are we open to someone with 20 years of uh, work? Uh, I don't think we impose any particular, you know, cutoff based on experience. It's up to the participant based on his perception of, you know, benefiting from the program. We don't really have any hard role on that right now. Uh, you know, we are looking to build a good cohort of you know candidates. So experience, uh, you know, matters to us. You know, if you have good experience, good working experience, you have prior MBA experience, and it all count uh, to entry. So there is no restrictions. If you have already an MBA, you can't apply and enter. You know, we welcome any candidate who is willing to learn and put significant of time for learning. Yeah. Uh, another question from AK, 
is there any option of transfer of credits as per new education policy? The NEP has not yet come to, has not become effective. Uh, let's say if there is, you know, there is a decision tomorrow by the board that we can accept credit from elsewhere, uh, we would be doing that. Yeah. As of now, uh, no. As of now, not. So, uh, request Saurabh Gulati, uh, uh, you can unmute and talk. Ask your questions, Saurabh. Hi, very good evening, sir. Very good evening, all. So, like, uh, I have an experience for like 16 years plus in IT industry, but now I'm about to like, I'm about to start my own startup, uh, like, very soon. So, would I be eligible for this program if I'm doing the business? Yes, like... yes, yes. You, you're eligible. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. Ranbir Makin. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm speaking. Thank you so much uh, for this initiative. I have been following I am Ahmedabad from last one year, looking for this kind of program. I think earlier you were offering EPGP and uh, now That's you right. are offering the blended board. Thank you so much. So the, I have two questions. One is, uh, so I have 10 years of experience in corporate and then six years entrepreneurship. So can, could you talk how this uh, program is going to help on the entrepreneurial growth and what's special about entrepreneurs on this program? That's the first question. Second question, I think someone has already asked about IAT, the aptitude test. Could you tell, will it be like tougher than GMAT, similar to GMAT or how it is actually? Just, uh, I was not able to understand. Uh, yeah. All right. On, on, on the admission test, as I said, uh, explained earlier, we look at IAT, that is our own, our own IMA, IMA admission test. We consider CAT score, we consider GMAT score, we consider GRE score. If you don't have any of the CAT score, GMAT or GRE score, you're welcome to write to uh, write our own admission test. And those who are already have GMAT and uh, CAT score, and if you don't have good score as you think, uh, we would encourage you to write uh, our own uh, admission test as well. In terms of how uh, I, I am a admission test fair with CAT and G, uh, GMAT, so uh, one one uh, one uh, response would be it will be much you know simpler in terms of organizational uh, approach. Uh, we we want you to learn from uh, IMA. So uh, right. are you able to? Pick up the courses at IMA, it will be reflected in, in, in the, the test you offer. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, coming back to your question, Ranbir, on you know, how entrepreneurs are likely to benefit out of this program. Right. Right. I can see three ways in which the entrepreneurs uh, could uh, benefit from the program. One, as I mentioned, there is a gamut of electives that we have, right. which focuses on you know the different dimensions of entrepreneurship, the soft and the hard aspects. Okay, right. that's one. The second is we have a very vibrant, uh, you know, startup ecosystem here at IMA through the CIA initiative called IMA Ventures. Uh, you could really connect with them, and then you know, even if you are keen to incubate your venture there, you can. You are free to do that. That's second. Third is in our programs, uh, long duration programs, we provide uh, support to entrepreneurs uh, who want to really incubate here. There is, for example, we have something called an IMA Maverick scholarship for PGPs. Uh, we haven't thought through exactly what could be done for this program, but if there is enough interest, maybe we can even consider doing something like, uh, you know, helping those students to set up their uh, graduates to set up their um, enterprise here to, uh, you know, waving off some of the charges that otherwise CIA would do. But uh, nothing formal as yet, but at least I can say that the two components that I talked about uh, would help. And if I were to add one more, most of our faculty are actually engaged on, you know, one form or the other with startup ventures. Therefore, that experience would actually add to your, you know, uh, value of your interaction and learn. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ranbir and to, uh, once again, Ranbir and others, you know, since you're asking questions on our own test, uh, we're expecting some uh, template of questions to, to, be, to be online in, in the next one or two weeks. So that Thank will you so give much. you a flavor of the kind of questions you know, we, we have. And again, please remember, we are looking at 10th and 12th. If you are able to do well, you know, you're through. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, may I request Shalini Suman? Shalini, can you come in? Yeah, thank you, Professor. And it's a great um, initiative, I think, for working professionals. So I was looking forward to it. I have a few questions. Uh, in terms of the campus visits, 
So I, what I understood from the session, the campus visits happens in frequent uh, duration, is it? So every time for a person staying extreme south, we have to travel and plan our travel, is it? It or, uh, each it term. Okay. May I answer now? Uh, each yeah, term yeah. you have a campus touch point. So the first uh, term, the term begins with a campus uh, visit of seven days. Then in the same uh, you know, year, first year, you have two others, which are both five days of duration. And in second year, you have 13 days, which are split into five, five, and the program <laughs> ends with the three days campus module. So total of 30 days. That's the schedule. Uh, yeah, so, but... We'll have to travel, uh, plan the travel, right, accordingly, because basically... Yes, yes, yes. We have already frozen the dates for one year. We'll, um, in by the time you be, we begin the program, we will actually freeze the second year dates as well, so that, we, you know, candidates can prepare themselves well in advance. Okay, and this test uh, dates and all will be published in the website. We can go and, uh, will it be online? We can go and take the test. The, the yeah. test dates are already uh, published. Yeah. It's May 19th. There are two tests uh, which we will organize. So the first one is on May 19th and the second is on May 26th. It's already available on the website. Oh, okay. And so what's the fee structure? If we, that is also there in the website? Yes. It's, uh, it's announced. It's um, the, the total fee of 20 lakhs uh, is actually paid over different installments, including a commitment fee. I think it's paid and in the... six installments. The details are put up on the website. Yeah. Or throughout the program, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Many, many people are asking about uh, what is the total kind of a time commitment uh, every week that, uh, including the class sessions, that is expected out of the participants. <laughs> so seven sessions uh, would actually mean, um, you know, it, it's almost like ten hours. You can say seven sessions, but we would expect them to have put in as many hours of prep as well. So therefore, it would involve a um, significant amount of input from candidates because uh, unless you prepare a case which is going to be discussed in the class, um, it's going to be very difficult for the participants to benefit out of the program because the whole session could actually go without necessarily meaning much sense to the participants. So therefore, reading the case. So what we intend to do in a nutshell is that we will actually create enough nudges so that you will be actually able to read the case. You know, reading a case can really be a little bit torturous. One has to really do a little bit of back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah one question from Himanshu Pratap Singh. Um, if by any chance we miss a particular session, is there a possibility to catch up uh, through some recording? So what we intend to do is that the recordings will be made available for a week on request. After that, it will not be made available because you routinely, I mean, we know that human tendency is to really fall back upon what is there in the storage. So, but then it has to go through our brain. So just to make sure that, you know, people remain engaged in the program, we'll make the recordings available only for a week. After that, it will be expunged. Uh, can I request Krishna Mohan to unmute and ask his question? Krishna Mohan. Uh, hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, thanks, Professor Jacob, to take us through the course. Uh, I have three questions. First question is why the cohort size we are targeting? And uh, will all the alumni of this cohort or this program will be having full alumni status of IMA? And third, uh, how this how this program is benchmark or designed, whether it's based on the market survey, what I am has done based on the skills gap, or credibility gap for the professional like me is having uh, in our career growth or is it based on some of the ongoing program like uh, in CRD LFC or uh, some of the program of ISB, uh, which we are having in India or Western program. So these are the three questions of uh, Professor Jacob and Professor Mohan. So the cohort size that we are targeting is uh, close to 100 plus, uh, but I may never uh, want to really scale up this program beyond a certain level. Uh, in fact, we actually run the lowest uh, PGP cohort size uh, in among the other comparable IMs. So we don't want to really build this program to a big scale. We, we are not targeting that. We have learned that from that point, you know, the, the acceptance of what we call as education, which is distance, uh, dis where participants are not on campus, is actually significantly gone up and the infrastructure and the faculty preparedness has also gone up. 
Therefore, uh, we think that there is a legitimate uh, need to reach out to working professionals who may not want to leave their jobs, you know, and want to upskill at the same time. This program is actually meant to address that. Surveys have very clearly done that. In fact, we had actually set up a program portfolio committee which had examined the need for different programs. And we found that there's a critical gap that emerges. The third question that you had asked about the alumni status, uh, all participants in the program will be given alumni status, which will be without any conditions attached to that for any other long distance program, the participants, graduates would be, yeah, thank you. Mansi wanted to know what is the chance of people with three to three and a half years of experience making it to this program? <clears throat> As we uh, said, you know, we are looking for a good cohort of people. It can come from three years of experience. It can come from 10 years of experience. It can come from 20 years of experience. So we are looking for people who can learn, uh, is, is interested to learn. That's the only criteria we have. And the kind of cohort we, we have for our own PGP program and PGPX is a mix of industry, uh, you know, gender, uh, diversity, you know, range of skills. That's what we're looking for. You know, it doesn't matter if you have only three or five or you have 20 years of experience. Uh, we would encourage you to apply. <laughs> yeah. Um, can I request Aditi? Aditi, can you unmute and ask your question, please? Yes, uh, a very good evening, uh, professors. It's really a great initiative by uh, Ayan and Adabad uh, to interact with uh, us prospective students. So my first question is, uh, uh, what would be the best resources for uh, preparing for the entrance test? That is the IIT examination. And uh, my second question is, uh, what are the skill sets which uh, we are expected to imbibe before joining this uh, online MBA program? Uh, Aditi, on the first question, you know, as I said before, you know, 12th, 10th and 12th you know, mathematics stream uh, is what we are expecting. Uh, to, to know more about the type uh, of questions, you know, please wait for another week or 10 days. We will you know, put out some template format questions uh, covering each component, quantitative uh, you know, aptitude, uh, verbal ability and analytical reasoning. So you will you will see a set of questions as a template. On your second question, you know what could be some you know skills that you would like to really have before you onboard into the program. Uh, we have created what we call as a pre MBA module, which will be async asynchronous courses, which you will have access to. They focus on some some preparation on quantitative skills and also on financial accounting those which we think are important to really make, get everyone up to speed when the program begins. Uh, just, just to add to Aditi and others, you know, uh, if you're wondering, you are not from the science or mathematics stream on 12th, so don't worry. You, know, uh, you, can, you can prepare well if you have done uh, good mathematics in 10, uh, that also would be uh, you know, more than adequate, but you know, we would we'd expect some level of understanding of certain you know, uh, mathematics uh, subjects. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, thanks, Aditi. Uh, Aniket Patil wants to know, I am a working uh, a professional from IT industry, and I wanted to know whether this online MBA will be helpful for me to switch into technical, techno-managerial roles. Yeah. Hmm, that's a hard one um, for us to answer, <laughs> but um, I think the inputs in the program are actually not necessarily narrowed into one domain. It is uh, wider and in the first year, and it is deep based on the choice of the candidate in the second year. Therefore, one may actually get prepared on other uh, domains if one really desired, decides to do so. But will employers choose, you know, uh, based on that switch is something which is hard for us to answer right now. But the program gives you the opportunity to yeah. In, in in addition, if you look at the PGPX uh, you know, uh, cohort we have, they also come from different industry. They come here, you know, study for one year, and they are able to switch. So while we cannot guarantee that you know switch will happen in in your case, but you know switch is possible. Shubham Chopra. So Suresh, uh, Suresh yeah. Biju has joined, so maybe he will also. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I saw that. 
Yeah, Shubham Chopra uh, wanted to know: Can we club the electives with residential cohorts, or uh, will the elective be same for uh, PGP, PGPX, and uh, online MBA, or it will be different? Uh, the content of the elective will be the same if one decides to, let's say, someone offers a program on new venture financing and the course will have more or less the same content across PGPX, PGP and others. But given the nature of the program and the, you know, I would say the separate class timings and so on, they would be offered uh, independently to the programs rather than a unified format. Yeah, many people wanted to know, uh, get into, uh, get to understand, is there any cutoff for IIT, GMAT, and uh, GRE? Uh, as of now, we haven't uh, have a cutoff. Uh, as I said before, uh, we take uh, CAT, GMAT, GRE, and our own test. If you believe, uh, you know, your CAT scores are less, uh, again, we would encourage you to write IIT. Uh, that would be my answer as of now. And the follow-up question from many people in the same line is, uh, what is the weightage for IIT and personal interview? Uh, in terms of weightage, uh, of course, uh, we, we have uh, decided to give uh, weightage based on uh, three criteria, uh, which is one is the test, Second uh, is the experience you, you bring in. There is a, you know, a marks there and a, a personal interview. Uh, the ex expectation is that, you know, you would perform well in, in, in all three. Uh, that, that's the expectation from our side as of now. Yeah. Can I request Kushal Sarva, uh, Sarav, Saravgi to uh, unmute and ask you a question? Kushal? Yes, um, thank you. Um, so Kushal, this time I have three questions. One is on attendance. Is there a specific minimum uh, attendance we'll have to maintain uh, on the online lectures? Uh, and it's already been clarified that the physical ones are mandatory. So that's one. Second is uh, my background comes from family business uh, setup. So I'm the second generation here. Uh, so anything, spe any specific courses uh, directed towards learning within this sorts of an ambience and the third is uh, will we also have access to the list of electives in the newer future before the course begins uh, you know quickly getting back to your initial point on the attendance requirement um, for all programs at IMA we require I mean ideally 100% attendance but we provide uh, up to 20% uh, you know one can on with approval can really miss classes but that's only at a course level not at the program level so you cannot really completely miss a whole course uh, so to say uh, that answers your first question i guess uh, on what is there specific for family business uh, input uh, on family business uh, you know we still do not really have a specific stream uh, because i think the specifically we don't really have too many people coming into either pgpx or pgp with that mindset. So the clauses that I can see is entrepreneurship uh, related electives, uh, but there are faculty who focuses on family business uh, management uh, on campus. It's subject to sufficient interest uh, among participants. There could be a specific focus on these issues such as estate planning or, you know, let's say from the finance side, a stream that I represent or could be from the entrepreneurship side. Now on the list of electives, um, uh, Kushal, uh, one way we can uh, give you a sense is to really give you a list of electives that are offered for AB, PGP and PGPX. Because the electives are offered based on demand, it will give you a sense of what is a bouquet of electives we have as an institute. The same bouquet or something more expanded than that would be available to all programs uh, next year because we keep expanding that. But that is subject to interest among participants. So therefore, can we commit this will be the elective that will be offered? That is subject to number of you know, certain minimum number of students opting for it, but we can always share the bouquet of electives that are currently offered. Thanks, Kushal. Uh, thanks, Professor. Uh, Mehul Tank wants to know what if a candidate have an advanced degree like a PhD with two years of experience, will his research experience be considered post-graduation experience? Uh, his research experience means uh, uh, research while to doing PhD? PhD, yeah. 
Uh, no. Uh, while doing PhD cannot be considered as a research experience for us, uh, we would request uh, candidates who have graduate as a minimum criteria and uh, three years of experience. Postgraduate or post degree, uh, you know, PhD degree experience. We do have, uh, you know, people from PhD, uh, both in PGP and PGPX, you know, uh, uh, badges. So, you know, in terms of whether you, whether the question is whether you will fit in, don't worry, you will definitely fit in. But uh, ex expectations that you will have three years of experience post your degree. Yeah. Uh, can I request uh, Prakash Karan? Prakash Khan? Prakash Karan? You can unmute and talk. Thank you. Uh, I think you answered the question just, uh, you know, before uh, me, the, it was asked. However, I would like to, since I've got the time, I'll ask you, uh, would would a, a person with two years of experience be allowed to sit for the test for a practice because next year then we can take it up again because three years, less than three years, you're not allowing? Can we appear for the test? IAT? Uh, no, you need to have a minimum of three years of experience. Only post, then you are uh, eligible post uh, after graduation. So once you have three years of experience, then you are eligible to apply. Fair enough. Thank you. One clarification. Those those who are already in the in the second year of experience uh, and would like to do the test next year, of course, it's possible. <laughs> Thanks, Professor. Vritan Desai I wanted to know, is there any negative marking system uh, in IIT? Um, we, we plan to do IAT very similar to the CAT and GMAT structure. Uh, so uh, in some sections of this test, there are negative marking, markings. Uh, we plan to follow that pattern. Yeah. Aishwarya Johnson wants, wants to know what is the industry acceptance of this program and uh, job opportunities like a, 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 compared to a regular MBA. Uh, as I had referred to, um, we are actually, you know, out to create awareness about the program in terms of the value that it creates for participants uh, in the industry. We are actually already started that by reaching out to HR departments of uh, large and small firms in India. So awareness will be built. Um, as I mentioned, we are not directly providing placement support as we do for people who are on campus who leave their job and come here. But the participants uh, in the program and the batch can organize career advancement, uh, you know, efforts themselves that they are free to do. Um, that's all what I can say at this point in time. So the career progress opportunities will depend on how this program is accepted. Um, that is what we are actually trying to build. But beyond that, I can't comment on that right now. Professor Ramon Radhika wants to know the three years of experience. Uh, if I have a CAT score uh, after two years of OK experience, now I am three years of OK experience plus. Uh, will my CAT score, if it is within that five year period, it will be considered? Yes, it will be considered. Yeah. Uh, can I request Nimai Banir to come in? Nimai? You can ask your question. I can unmute. Okay. Hello. Go ahead, Hello. Mai. We can hear you. Hi. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, this is a very good initiative taken by I am Ahmedabad. Actually, I am from Baduan, West Bengal. But uh, I have a few questions, I think two or three questions. First question is my eligibility related. And second and third question that sports, sports related and future higher studies related. My first question is. Uh, I have done my 10 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. That means my BCom was 2 years and as well as my MCOM was 2 years. Right now I'm pursuing MCOM. advanced finance from XLRI New Delhi with USCPA. Okay. And as well as I, I have more than 15 years experience in the field of financial and tax consultancy. So I am eligible or not eligible? This is, this is my first question. 
Uh, Nimai, if I understood uh, your question correctly, you already have a bachelor and master's. Yes, uh, if, yeah, if that's the case, you are indeed eligible and you have significant experience and we would welcome you to write uh, the test. But my DCOM percentage you are not 50%, but my MCOM percentage is 65%. Uh, no, so no. Why don't you write to us, uh, Nimai, separately? Uh, because our minimum requirement is 50%. No, my become percentage is not 50 percent. My income percentage is 65 percent. Okay, you can, you can write to us, we'll respond appropriately. Okay, okay. and my yeah. second question is uh, if I unfortunately get the opportunity from the um, American, uh, can I pursue this course MBA on finance and as well as the higher studies from finance from I am that is the FPM program. Uh, this program is a master's degree. Therefore, uh, you're free to apply for a PhD subject to the, you know, meeting the program requirements. There is no, uh, there is no restriction on that. Actually, I have a dream because I want to pursue the PhD on finance from Ahmedabad. And generally, I, I choose a topic that is the unused of unclaimed amount in huge storage in bank and financial institution and the collect from income tax department and other department the drainage in sure. so, th there is no bar on that because it's a master's program that makes you eligible subject to the phd admission requirements and criteria you're free to apply and unlike the earlier days where we used to provide exemption to any graduate pgp pgpx or any other we don't really do that exemption from coursework anymore in our phd program so Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. First, I'm um, just I'm checking my eligibility or not. I'm sending to my yeah. Students. Yeah. Please send us an email. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Professor, a small request. Uh, many people are asking the question, how will the certificate look like? What will be the nomenclature? So, if you can put that, uh, keep that slide yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. We can uh, for uh, the people who have asked the question uh, how the certificate will look like, yeah. uh, you can refer the slide. Okay. Uh, so, like, uh, can I request Rajiv uh, to come in and ask his question? Rajiv? Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Rajiv. Go ahead. We can Hello. hear you. Yeah, we yeah. can hear you, Rajiv. Sir, I have uh, only one question. Yeah, I have only one question. I'm into consulting, government consulting infrastructure, and I deal with many international contracts and also supply chain finance, uh, export import procedures. So I just wanted to know, will the course electives be offered in such areas as well, where I can find, I specialize into these segments and because we have to deal with international taxes and withholding tax and so many things. So will the courses on corporate tax planning, international planning, yeah, yeah, we have. Uh, That's all I have. Yeah, the existing uh, electives uh, actually cover some of the areas that you have mentioned. We actually have, depending on demand, we actually have a course on corporate tax planning. We have a course on international finance. We have a course on infrastructure finance. We have a course on professional managing professional service firms. So various electives are there, you know, which are overlapping some of the areas that you have mentioned. Uh, as I meant, as I, you know referred to earlier, the offering of a particular elective also depends on, you know, certain minimum number of students being opting for that elective. That, that is a constraint that you would face. But there are quite a few courses which are contributing to the area. Therefore, it is likely that you may actually find a certain number of courses in the field of your interest. Okay, sir. There's only one request to you all is that uh, the course timing in the evening is from 6.45, has been kept at 6.45. Generally, in metro cities and those who are interacting with the government authorities, generally we reach our uh, base location, our home or guest house, company accommodation by 8 or 8 kind of. So if the courses could be started a bit later, because then we would miss out on the attendance if we are selected through the program. So that's all I request. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll think through that. Yeah. Yeah. Kumar Abhishek wants to know... Uh... Uh, during the campus visit, I understand no accommodation is available from the IM side. So students have to make their own arrangement. Will the hostel facility be available on a chargeable basis? Uh, 
Rashmi can respond. Yeah. So we are looking at options for that. However, uh, that would again be based on the availability of the hostel at that time. So currently, we cannot commit on making the rooms available, but we are looking into that option also. However, uh, your fourth visit certainly be on campus because we are planning it at a point in time where you would actually have access to hostel facilities. The first visit, we are actually trying to make available, you know, accommodation for a significant number of participants on campus, but we can't commit that uh, straight away. But we can say that the fourth visit, you will be actually on campus. But we will facilitate, our office will coordinate to arrange uh, these facilities outside. Uh, third visit. Yeah. Th uh, third, did third I say fourth visit? visit? Yes. It's a third visit, actually. Yeah. It is a third visit, you will be on campus. Yeah. Priyanshu Jaiswal wanted to know, I am based out of Middle East. Since we have Sundays working here uh, in this region, wanted to understand if there is something specific I need to keep in mind apart from Sunday classes. Uh, no, um, as just um, they, they, there's a possibility that one extra session for any missed session on account of an emergency that happened, a faculty could not, you know, for medical reasons, could not really take the class or there's an exam or we have an interaction with a distinguished guest for the group. You know, those are the likely, uh, you know, uh, way in which the extra session could be occupied. Otherwise, it is strictly 1020 to 1135, only one session. Yeah, Abhinav wants to know, uh, uh, Professor, if I, if a person is on a sabbatical uh, after three years of work experience, he is right now not working, he is on a sabbatical, will he be eligible to apply? Yes, he will be. Yeah. Uh, and the follow-up is, Nitish wants to know, as a process, application process, uh, are we required to submit the SOP as well? No, there is no requirement of SOP. In the application form itself, we haven't mentioned any SOP, so there is no requirement. Okay. Uh, can I request Abhinav Thakur to come in and uh, ask you a question? Abhinav? Okay. Can go into next. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's go to Anurag Bajpai. Anurag. Yeah, sir. Uh, sir, I am available. Yeah. Abhinav. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, go ahead, professor. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure interacting with you. Uh, sir, I had one doubt in that. Um, sir, how does this program fare in comparison to executive MBA, which is residential in nature? If you can quantify in terms of quantum of uh, learning impact it can have say 70% or 80% because this is one of the major confusions. And second, in terms of cohort size, you said that 100, 100 students will be enrolled. So will it be in different, only one batch, 100 students, or will it, will it be two batches, 100, 100 students? Thank you. Um, so the, the answer to the first question is, as far as learning is concerned, uh, if... Uh, the participant is, you know, effectively engaged. We do not really foresee any difference in the learning outcome for the residential program and this because, in fact, the core courses are not very different from the PGPX, but the number of electives and the elective options are much uh, broader for this program. So in that sense, I would say that this is the residential program plus in terms of electives because they have only one year. Therefore, they have to crunch a lot of things in such a short time. So that's one way of looking at it. On uh, your second question, we do not plan to have more than 75 in a single batch. So if we actually end up having a batch, which is 100 plus, then we end up splitting into two separate batches, but with simultaneous uh, classes. Uh, okay. What is, the, uh, what is the criteria for calling for the uh, uh, interview? This is a question from Abhishek again. Yeah, as I explained earlier, uh, one, you have to have certain eligibility requirements met. Once you do that, you will have to write a test, admission test. Either it could be our own test or it could be CAT, GMAT, or GRE. Uh, with a professional experience, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll add up to a score, which will have an invitation for interview. 
uh, that would be my answer now. Yeah. Uh, can I request Saurav Laik? Saurav, can you unmute and ask your question, please? Yeah, Professor. Hi, good evening. Uh, I have basically a uh, uh, few questions here. Well, my first question is that, uh, as you mentioned, that you have you will you will probably provide the template of the IIM test question papers. Is that right? In two weeks. Yes, it is correct. Correct. My second question is that uh, will IIM A will be facilitating any educational loan from National Bank? I'll call him next. Uh, we have already, uh, you know interacted with SBI and uh, Access Bank. Both of them are actually going to provide loans to this. The loan will cover the tuition, will cover your you know, accommodation expenses, and if you're buying any equipment like a laptop and so on. But it will not cover travel expenses. The loan will be covered under the scholar scheme. We are talking to other banks like HDFC and ICICA for making loans available as well. Okay. My say, next question is, um, is there any uh, scholarship going on or for the waiver of fees for exceptional candidates for this cohort? Um, as of now, we can't commit anything. We may actually end up having some scholarships for some specific categories, but we can't commit that right now. Okay. And my last question is, uh, have you taken any comprehensive feedback from different organizations in India about the acceptance of this cohort uh, in hiring or placing them or uh, adding any value? Uh, we can't say that uh, specifically we have taken a feedback, but we have actually did some, you know, we have done some assessment Sorry. of uh, program needs uh, and we found that offering such a program is a critical, you know, uh, field that we are filling in, that we have a sense. We are going to create awareness among the employers in India that this program is equivalent to any other, except that the mode of learning is partly through distance uh, online, uh, that we are going to commit ourselves to. Yeah, that's all what I can commend us of now. Can I request Anurag? Anurag Bajpai, please come in. Good evening, every professor and staff. Sir, I am engineer. I have completed my BTEC in 2015. After that, I have come, I have done 16 months of job and I have a master degree also. So am I eligible with this 16 months of job and with master degree? Uh, Anirag, uh, if we can ask you, what are you doing now? Currently, actually, my psychiatric treatment is going on. I went into a depression. So right now I'm not working. But after my bachelor, I did job in IT for 16 months. And currently, I have a master degree also in computer science. Okay, Anurag, the response is that, you know, we have certain criteria as eligibility. One is the three years experience. So we would request you to show that three-year experience in some format. Okay, uh, master degree you send us a... won't help me? No, no, you know, we are looking at either graduate or postgraduate plus three years of experience. Is that oh, okay. That's a minimum requirement. If you can send us a mail, we'll respond appropriately. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I request uh, uh, BCT Sheila to come in and ask you a question? Uh, good evening, sir. This is, I'm extremely sorry. Uh, this is, I have registered on my wife's name. So it was a BCT <laughs> Sheila. My name is Kasi Vishwanath. Uh, so oh, I okay, have two queries, sir. Uh, two queries, sir, uh, regarding my uh, eligibility first thing. I have completed my diploma in mechanical engineering and started working over there in uh, different companies, basically. And uh, later on, I have completed my graduation in uh, BTEC in mechanical engineering through distance mode from JNTU Hyderabad. So I have al al almost 20 years of experience uh, uh, continuous, sir. I have completed my engineering in 2007. But... Uh, to be frank, I, my experience did not add up my engineering anywhere. So will it be considered as a postgraduate experience or not, sir? First question is that. Uh, I didn't understand the question fully. Uh, okay. If you have done a distance education of engineering and if you can showcase equivalence, which is of you know, a graduate degree, then I think we can consider. 
Uh, but we need to look at the degree. Post graduation, what is his experience, Professor? I think he has to. When did he finish his uh, engineering graduation? I have completed my engineering graduation in 2007, sir. And right now I am working as an operations manager for oil and gas industry. All right. So you have enough experience as well, right? So, you know, yes, it's nothing, mm. not an issue yeah. with respect to application. Yes, sir. Because I have started as a maintenance technician and I grew up in a course of time. And now I am working as an operations manager in Africa. All right. Please and my, consider applying. Yes, here. sir. Okay. In my second question, sir, my actual job uh, nature is on rotational basis. My work is for two months on and one month off. So, is there any flexibility for uh, campus uh, drive, like campus uh, uh, attendance, yes. to schedule on a different date? As or <laughs> is there any particular fixed date for that? The there's all, the dates are already frozen for one year, and the second year dates will be frozen by the time the program commences. So, except for very you know, ex exigent uh, situations, we don't really provide exemptions from the campus module or for that matter, from the entire program from attending for, I mean, except, uh, you know, emergencies. So you'll have to keep that in mind. Okay, so because my rot uh, rotation would, would not be changing as such because like two months would be working and uh, one month will be completely off. So I'm thinking like right. if there is any any time frame in between where I can come for and uh, sit in the uh, campus module, with any other batch if possible or something like that. Okay, okay. So you can just check, cross-check the dates we'll publish uh, or, you know, it's available on the presentation right now and see okay. if that fits your schedule. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That's it, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Can I request Kaushik Chathopadhyaya? Uh, Professor, uh, uh, we'll be in a position to take another four, three, four questions. Sure, sure. Mm, there, so, there are a lot more. There are a lot more. If you want, we can yeah, go on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so first of all, thank you, uh, Professor, for uh, making this time. And uh, it was a good discussion to hear. My, I have two questions or other apprehensions. So first and foremost is with regards to IAT. So people like me who are having 20 plus year experience in industry, IAT will be again, go back to basics. So uh, a humble request will be, to put up a question back, then it will help us to exercise. That is first suggestion. Second thing is that with respect to cohort, I understand that uh, you are encouraging diversity of thought, diversity of experience and etc. Who are in three years to let's say 25 years, people will be interacting in same group. To make it more, uh, I would say palatable to all these uh, people available in the group, a suggestion is to maybe it can be divided into two groups so that maybe a 15 to 25 years group and a 3 to 13 years group can interact smoothly. So these are two suggestions and it's up to you. Uh, sure. If you consider. Okay, on the first question, you know, of course, we will make it available some template questions soon. Uh, second question, we, we are refusing to answer. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. okay. <clears throat> uh, Ganesh uh, C wanted to know what would be the cutoff date for the minimum age of 24 years and, and three years work experience? 30th March, right? Yeah, it, it, no. As on June 30th. As, uh, sorry. As on June 30th, 2024. 24 years of age. Yeah. And three years of work experience. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, May I request Hari Krishnan to uh, come in and ask his question? Hari? <laughs> Hari, you are there? Shall I go to the next person, Hari? Yeah. Ask your question, Hari. You need to unmute yourself. Okay, Prashant Gupta. Prashant Gupta, can you unmute and ask your question? Prashant yeah. Gupta. Hi. Hi, everyone. Very good evening. So, um, I have given CAT. Um, I have 92 percent time. I think I have to give IAT too because I'm not sure what um, the you know cutoff will be, right, to increase my chances That's of good. selection. 92. Right. So... <laughs> Uh, to increase my, you know, selection chances, and I have around 2.9 years of experience. I think in May, towards May, I'll be completing that. 
So uh, any recommendation where I can increase my chances? Uh, Prashant, uh, you do have a good CAT score. Uh, we consider that. Uh, if you wish to write IIT, you know we cannot stop you. You are welcome to write IIT as well. Uh, yeah, by 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 uh, August, you will be having three years of experience. So you are welcome to apply. Okay. Uh, can I request Kumar Saurav? Kumar Saurabh Chaurasia, can you unmute? Yeah. Please good go evening, ahead. Sir. Good evening. It's a pleasure for me, sir, to attend this session. And thanks for organizing this session, sir. I have two questions. Question one, sir, I, I stay in Middle East. So the the selection interview will be, sir, face-to-face, -face, or will there be a provision for online also? That is my question one. Question two, sir, generally what I have seen uh, in other institutes like they say this as a course, as an executive MBA, not as a like online MBA, because uh, of course, uh, I am uh, Ahmedabad is uh, one of the finest institutes in India, and I consider it as in the world also. So like, sir, is there any uh, difference? Like I see in uh, like ESMT Berlin, they say uh, it's an executive MBA, 18 month executive MBA program. For me, it uh, this course also looks like the same also, sir. So is there any uh, like... Uh, uh, why, why uh, the sir, sir, like you are saying that it's a online MBA. So, is there any specific details on that, sir? Uh, so, the response to the second question um, is that uh, online MBA is a category that is emerging where executive MBA is offered on a flexible mode, and executives can really afford to take it. You know, partly weekend courses where it is available from async courses from online, live online. So that's a, that's a category that is emerging. The reason why we titled it as online MBA is to really, you know, get bucketed into that group, which is expanding around the world. Uh, why didn't we really christen it as executive MBA? Because we have already one which is running on campus. Uh, that explains the, you know, the second question. I mean, that's a response to the second question, yeah. So you had, an you had another question, right? No. Yes, sir. About the, the uh, interview, right? The interview will yeah, be yes, uh, online. Yeah, online. Yeah, interview will be online. Yeah. Sir, if, uh, can I ask third question? Are you thinking about yes. international immersions uh, as you have an executive MBA? Are you thinking about uh, including the international immersions in any of the like global? But, uh, right. <laughs> By design, we did not include it because we thought working executives already probably has, you know, significant exposure to different cultures and different kind of business contexts. But if there is sufficient interest that there is a group that would like to really have that part of that in second year, not in first year, we would be, you know, happy to explore that option. We have not built it into the design because we thought people are already seasoned and therefore, unlike our PGP cohort, you know, which may find value in going to Europe and understanding their culture, and how do they deal with their business? We thought there may not be as much value, which is why we do not know it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Still, many people are uh, posting question on uh, how the certificate look like uh, as an online MBA or MBA degree. The certificate is already posted on the screen. You yeah. can have a yeah. look at it, and uh, that will give you a clarity. Radha Krishna J, can you uh, come in and ask your question? Unmute and ask your question, please. Uh, hello, uh, thank you for uh, outlining most of the details. Uh, my question is about the alumni status we get. So do we get uh, equal invitation with other PGP students like in terms of events or, uh, you know, meetups that will happen? So this will be, this will be, a, this, uh, I'm sorry, this is a long duration program. And therefore yes. the alumni status that you will have that of all other degree programs that you have. It's not an alumni status of the executive education. That's my response. So therefore, uh, I mean, of course, I'm not also exactly familiar with the protocols that alumni office follow in inviting, but there will be no distinction between you and any other degree program that we have. Because this is the first degree program on offer where we have, you know, a blended mode or of equivalent. No, okay, thank you. Uh, may I request Karthikeyan, Karthikeyan uh, to come and ask his question? Karthikeyan. 
Thank you, sir. Uh, thanks for the time. So uh, I would like to understand how this directed device works. Is it like I, I can attend class from my home, from my home through a laptop, or should I visit any VC now center in Chennai, Chennai office? You don't have to, you know, go anywhere else if you have the infrastructure like a laptop and, uh, you know, a good camera attached to the laptop and, you know, enough audio devices. It is from our studio directly into your device. So you don't have to travel anywhere. I, I got it. And uh, is this course, this particular course, a certified AMBA to award MBA? Can you clarify that? How would this differ from the other program, what IMA offers? See, IMA by act that is passed by the parliament is now eligible to award degrees subject to internal approval by the board. So we are actually awarding this degree based on the you know power that we have uh, available through the enactment of the act by the parliament. Uh, and uh, we are following the norms that is agreed with the MHRD and the UGC for what we call as a you know, minimum requirement for awarding a master's degree in terms of number of sessions or teaching hours. Yeah. I got it. The reason I began asking this question, I could see uh, I am Trichy especially advertising that they have uh, AMBA certified to award MBA. I couldn't find that particular one in the website. So that's why no, I asked we, this we are not, as an institute, we are also not accredited by AMBA. We are only accredited by the Equis because we have not really gone for many international certifications probably being, you know, very early institute have established some reputation. So we thought probably accreditations are not required. Uh, in future, if we take it, probably we'll have that accreditation coming in. Yeah. I, I got it. Sir. So uh, is, uh, should I receive all the course materials, books, everything like the regular students receive in IMA? Yes, campus? yes, 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 <clears throat> yes. yes. Okay. And also, uh, uh, just to confirm that, I, I will receive uh, the IMA domain email ID as well, right? Uh, part of this yes. course? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. This is what Thanks, Kartikeyan. Uh, thanks, Kartikeyan. <laughs> we will take one last question. Uh, <laughs> Ratidhar Nath Goshal. We can, uh, Ratid... we can take uh, four or five questions, Suresh. Four, four or five questions. Questions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, take, yeah. uh, we, we'll uh, extend it till 8.15. Ratidhar Nath yeah, Goshal. Okay. Ratidhar Nath Goshal, you can come and ask your question. Good evening, professors. Uh, so uh, I am very excited uh, to think for this program. If I can opt for this program, I will be really benefited as I think. After, But however, uh, after 14 years of IT industry, I am really a bit scared uh, to relearn my school uh, courses, right? Quants, verbals. So that is why my query is, uh, what are the what are the total questions and duration for this exam uh, IIT? Uh, this is my query. Yeah, and for All how right. many questions for each each section? All right. Uh, to to respond, uh, Ravindranath, you know, uh, you should not think that you know you, you have lost touch with tenth and twelfth. You know, uh, you will be amazed to you know see that you know once you revise it, it will all come back to you. Yeah, I have so already started, sir. Thank you. I have already right. started and. I can see that, yes, I can catch it very fast. All right. So in terms of IIT exams, we have three components, verbal, analytical reasoning, and quantitative aptitude. Each section will have 15 questions, 30 minutes. The expectation is that you, know, you will be able to finish it by 90 minutes. And as I said before, uh, some of the template questions will be online in, in the next uh, seven to 10 days. Yeah. Uh, Shall can I can I request Big Chand? Uh, uh, Big Chand, can you unmute and ask your question, please? Yes, sir. Good evening. Yeah, please go ahead. We can hear you. Uh, my daughter is pursuing CA. She has completed BCom, and after that, she has done uh, three years of articleship with uh, uh, Big Four. Okay, uh, she has also completed MCom, but this articleship experience is post graduation, post BCom. Will it be considered, or can it be considered as uh, uh, experience after graduation? Can you really send us an email? We will, because I can't really respond just offhand. We'll have to just check and get back to you. Sure. Uh, can I get that ID, sir? 
you you can send that email to the enquiry email sure yeah we are, we are sending we are reaching out to you yeah so you can respond on that yeah thank you yeah uh, may I request chitra menon chitra menon can you come in and ask your question please yes sir good evening sir thank you for arranging this session uh, so my question is really on the eligibility so i am a working professional for the last 28 years uh, and right now i am at a senior management level in my organization uh, my question is on the eligibility uh, where it says that you know for graduation we need to have minimum 50% so will that hold good or is there any relaxation available on that uh, chitra unfortunately there is no relaxation on that front okay that's a minimum uh, criteria we have okay Yeah, uh, Chitra, that's can it. we go yeah. to, yeah, that's it, you are through, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, can you come in, unmute yourself and ask your question, please, yes. Hello, good evening, sir. Uh, I need to know the intake capacity for this batch, sir. As, uh, as mentioned, you know, we are actually... Uh, trying to set up a cohort which is of a certain quality and we don't want it to exceed um, significantly beyond 100. So, but we are somewhat flexible about the range, but we're not really going to expand this program, not in the immediate future to a number like 200 or 300, yeah. Yeah, yes, you're through. Can we go to the next person? Yeah, Mansi. Mansi Chapru, can you unmute and ask your question, please? Uh, hello. Uh, first of all, thank you for organizing this session. It gave a lot of clarity. Uh, actually, I missed the part on the timings of the session uh, and how many sessions will be there. If you could just take to that slide, that's it. Yeah, there are seven sessions in a week. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, two each. Sunday, one session. And depending on you know emergency or other interactions that may fall in we will actually also claim the pre lunch uh, you know 1155 to 110 so in that case there will be eight sessions but uh, it is more likely okay. to be seven than eight every week yeah okay also one thing uh, just like one other person had mentioned uh, that uh, in metropolitan cities our work timings are only till uh, seven so if you could like revise a bit on the timings that would be a little great or oh, maybe like start from 7 30 or so so that we could uh, be uh, thorough with our attendance yeah we will we'll think through but we can't respond that straight away we'll sure, just see sure. thank you yeah. so much thank you thank you yeah Thanks. Uh, Gautam Jadav, Gautam, can you come in and ask your question, please? Gautam? Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah, yes. you are. Go ahead. Hello. Thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity to speak. Uh, actually, I had few questions, but out of them, somebody has already been asked. So I have one particular question related to scholarship that uh, in, uh, scholarship uh, is provided to any categories uh, students. Uh, first of all, that. Second is, is, is there a minimum qualifying criteria for IIT or uh, GMAT scores? So that only above that uh, person will be called for interview. Uh, and third one is, I have few job gaps. I have uh, total 6.5 plus years of experience uh, after my graduation. So uh, job gaps are okay or not? Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Yeah, in terms of uh, work experience, if we have um, more than three in any format, uh, that's fine for us. Uh, uh, on, on the question of uh, the scholarship. scholarship. Yeah, on the scholarships, uh, as I said, you know, we are not committing anything right now, but we are exploring, let's say, for certain categories like defense or women, we are considering. Shankar, uh, Shankar Ware. Shankar, can you come in and ask your question, please? Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, uh, this is a very healthy conversation. I have uh, two questions. One is, uh, uh, can we apply for build specialization? And what is the fee structure for that? 
sorry we just lost you uh, what specialization uh, can you apply for dual dual specialization dual specialization uh, yeah. see uh, the way the structure is you are actually allowed to choose a certain number of credits for example in the second year barring the core course which is half a credit 17 and a half credits you can choose from a bouquet of electives in that sense you can choose courses from finance let's say five of them and choose a set of courses from marketing in that sense you will actually have deep down into both the domains we don't really charge any extra fee or anything so rather we have kept it flexible depending on your interest you can choose the bouquet of courses in second year but they will all be electives if you want to choose and subject to availability let's say fill all your criteria from let's say a couple of areas that's perfectly possible in that sense you know the dual specialization that you talk about will be done and uh, what, what is the, the fee degree? structure for two years sir what is the fee structure 20 lakhs it is 20 lakhs uh, all inclusive including taxes but as we mentioned it excludes the residential component which we estimate you know it could cost excepting the travel somewhere close to 2 lakhs path karna path can you come in and ask your question sure. uh, good evening uh, professors <clears throat> so um, i have one question and a one suggestion i would ask so uh, i had given a cat and i got 99 percentile and uh, i gave an interview in i am ahmedabad also but didn't get through so i am in i am b right now so what to <laughs> ask that uh, would you suggest uh, like uh, i am a being my like dream uh, college for mba <laughs> uh, i wanted to ask that uh, uh, what should i do uh, like now that we have an opportunity to pursue uh, mba from i am a also uh parth uh, uh, our frank suggestion is that you know uh, you continue in I imb because it's a good institute you know uh, world class uh, do not feel sad that you could not come come back come to us uh, there are opportunities in future you can always come back for exercise education programs and don't you know leave i am bangalore yeah. just to want to add to that you know because the program focus for these two cohorts are very different pgp targets you know relatively young people without much seasoning whereas this program is actually meant for you know executives with significant work experience who want to really hone their skills in a certain way so therefore so, you can't really sort of you know compare the two programs yeah sure and also uh, so like i have two, uh, three years of experience where i was working in google for two years as an apprentice full time apprentice so will it also be counted as a full time experience yeah. yeah it will be all right thank you so much that's it Suresh, you are mute. Yeah, you are on mute, Suresh. We can't. Sorry. AK, AK, can you unmute and uh, ask your question, please? Ah, uh, yes. Thank you for offering me the chance to speak. Ah, uh, a few things I wanted to know, like for in GMAT, ah, uh, like I've taken uh, multiple times. So, like in third, I want to use the score of third, third one. So, shall I uh, put the score of total which has all the four, or after third, which I got the score that shall I upload? Ah, uh, second uh... thing. okay and the first question is not clear can you repeat uh, uh like i have taken four times this gmat overall okay. till now so okay. i want to use the score which i received on third attempt so if i see right now it's yeah. quite if it is score. not older than 5 years it is yeah fine yeah so in that yeah. all the four attempt score will be given in that score if it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it doesn't matter we'll we'll look at the best okay and what is the meaning of this volunteer facilitated campus sorry uh it was something mentioned on the this um, um, brochure i uh, does i am facilitate volunteer attendance of the program on campus in physical mode for uh -huh. a limited period of time so what is the meaning yeah, of this yeah so that may, that 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 is meant to you know uh, give an option let's say a candidate actually has you know taken one week off from work and want to be here when the sessions are being taught from the studio you can really come and attend the class physically with a limited number of you know such candidates being allowed yeah that's what it means 
in uh, in mtech of i took skip the second semester which i uh, took after along with my fourth semester so final marks which i got in fourth semester of third semester, second semester will it be suffice or mark sheet wise of second semester will also be suffice in the sense in second can uh, you I... can you send us a query on this we'll respond to it because sure. it seems more technical and we'll have to think this is about your degree marks right yeah masters yeah yeah yeah, yeah uh, ms ramanathan can you uh, unmute and ask your question please ramanathan Good evening. Yeah, sorry, I missed out on the start of the program. I could only join once the the questions were being taken. So, I just would like to know, like, uh, I'm a chartered accountant with around thirty two years of post qualification experience, with around eight years with Big Four and uh, around seventeen years with the top twenty telecom company. I just wanted to know at this juncture of my career. Like to what extent this online program will be of benefit for me, and like to what extent is it fully online, and or what what would be the campus immersion? Like what is the uh, how long will be the campus uh, immersion? Like, these are the two queries we have. Right. So let me ask the easier question. Uh, the campus is twenty percent, and uh, the live online is eighty percent. Yeah. now going back to your original question you know with uh, three decades of experience in you know finance and accounting how would this program benefits uh, i think the only way it can benefit you if you want to really expand your horizon into other fields of management if you had been laser focused on finance but if you have already been immersed as part of your finance function into other fields like marketing strategy hr you know literally dealing with everything in organizations then uh, i i i doubt whether you know the program is actually going to expose you to something which is totally different from what you have experienced however um, as we say that uh, sorry course, had it been a full time course probably like it would have uh, mattered a bit more is it not it's mostly uh, uh, i don't think that emerging. that will not make a difference uh, we okay. vouch that that is not going to make a difference what okay. is going to make a difference is you know how much exposure would you seek to expand your you know mental models um, out of what you have done so far not the online or on campus yeah. are there any exemptions for uh, senior professionals or everybody has to take the admission test <laughs> everyone has to take admission test <laughs> okay Be because this is a degree granting program and therefore we cannot really Uh, be flexible you know, be flexible on some of these things you know unlike okay. earlier offers where we had the opportunity to yeah. go okay. do it in a way we liked yeah yeah you kindly share the full presentation because i missed it i was outside actually yeah sure thank you sure yeah, yeah. thank you <clears throat> yeah uh, venkat raman b venkat raman can you unmute and ask your question Hi. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. Uh, this is Mangat Raman from Bangalore, and I have overall about fifteen plus years of experience. And uh, my question is two questions. First one, basically, I have uh, completed my graduation in the BBA stream, which is through distance education from Madras University. So, um, and this I had completed back in two thousand and seven. So, I wanted to know if I will be eligible. um for the course and uh, uh second i wanted to know that uh, uh you know in terms of uh, the uh the the uh, merit that this uh, program would hold what would be the future uh, uh you know prospects in terms of our uh, career opportunity or be it uh, uh, the opportunity uh, you know in the market um responding to the first question of course you are eligible as long as you have 50% uh, uh, minimum marks uh, on the second question um, as we mentioned that we aspire to be in this category one of the top programs globally that's what we aspire we intend to right. spread uh, you know significant amount of awareness within employers in india and probably in future even outside about the value this program grants to participants and it is not different from any other program that we run 
except that given the working status of the participants, part of the learning is actually through a mode where they are not on campus. So that's the promise that we have, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Vankar Raman. Pratik, Pratik Joshi. Pratik Joshi, can you unmute and uh, ask your question, please? Pratik? Go next. Let's go. Let's put it next. Yeah. Akansha? Akansha, can you unmute and ask your question? Pratik has come in or what? Akansha, can you unmute and ask your question? Yeah, we can go to the next step. Uh, Shubrato? Shubrato Hello. Mukherjee. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Shubrato. Yeah, good evening. Pratik, Pratik you can mute. Pratik, you can mute, please. Shubrato is asking. Uh, we'll, we'll give you an opportunity. Wait. Shubrato, go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, sir, for giving the opportunity, sir. Uh, I wanted to say that I, uh, I am currently in the government currently. Uh, and I wanted to uh, come to uh, teaching. And so if I uh, pursue this uh, program, and then can I opt for a fellow program in management in the future, sir? This program uh, makes you eligible to apply for PhD because it's a degree granting program as a master's degree. So therefore, you can apply. But of course, admission will be subject to, you know, the program requirements and the application pool. Yeah. Sir, I'm I'm currently working as an officer in the government, sir. Sure, sure. Uh, okay. Thank so you. So that is why, sir. I uh, sir, and the uh, second uh, is that, sir, I uh, have given CAT also this year, sir, and I have a CAT score uh, of uh, ninety six percent value. And uh, so, sir, if I, uh, uh, what can be the cut of uh, CAT score in that regard, sir? Uh, so, Brito, as I you know earlier remarked to other candidate, your CAT score is good. Uh, you should consider applying. Thank you, sir. And Thank you, Subroto. Dilip. Dilip. Ah, yes, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Yes, sir. You can ask. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for giving this opportunity. Actually, I am a chartered accountant. I qualified in May 23, but I have uh, three years of experience from 2019. Actually, 2019, I completed article ship and I completed CA final one, group one. So on this, uh, we're talking about eligibility, then if you can really send us a specific query, because we have not really thought about this. Uh, send us a query, we'll respond. Um, you you want the so this details, experience yeah. was article ship? Uh, yeah, no, apart from article ship, after article ship, I have three years of experience. Okay, okay. So you send us a query, any which we'll respond. Oh, okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Dilip. Jocelyn, Jocelyn Kaur, can you unmute and ask your question, please? Jocelyn? Okay. One last question. Uh, one uh, we'll take uh, from Utkash. Utkash Shukla, you can unmute and ask your question. Uh, uh, hello, professors. Um, uh, very quickly, I have two questions. Um, so, if, if if a candidate has uh, both scores, GMAT and IAT, so which one would you consider the best of them, or you have a particular uh, weightage for particular particular score? And the second question is, um, as a PSU employee with 13 years of experience, if the employer uh, agrees to sponsor the program, is there a, a waiver or a, a, in GMAT requirement of uh, entrance exam, something like that? That's all. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Utkash, responding to your question overall, uh, we will not be able to tell you which test you should take. That is your discretion. We are offering a choice that you can take GMAT, CAT, GRE, and IAT. If you believe your GMAT score is good, you should consider applying. If you believe, you know, it is it is better to try GMAT and IAT. Uh, you know, you can try both uh, and 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 apply. Uh, that's only answer I can respond to that. Um, even if the employer sponsor. 
So admission criteria is entirely distinct from, from you know, sponsorship. You have to meet the eligibility criteria and secure an admission. Uh, that you know, must uh, be the criteria. Okay. No, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. I have some GMAT school with me, um, but I'm not sure whether how good it is. Uh, so I was wondering whether IAT or we, if, if, if I have both the scores and if I, if I give both the scores to the admission committee, then would they consider yeah. how would they uh, juggle between these two? Yeah, you can, you can send us a mail, we'll respond to that. Yeah, one last question from Bharati Arasu. This is the last question. Uh, uh, the remaining people uh, uh, who, who are Suresh, Suresh, in chat. Suresh, Suresh, I, Suresh I, I, no, we have only, we have only few questions. We, we can, can take that. We can take all questions. Yeah. Okay, fine. Bar, Bharati Arasu. Hi, sir. This yeah, is Bharati, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So I, I believe uh, the major segment who would be interested would come from IT industry, and uh, and most of them are supporting the North American market and all that. So on the Thursdays and Fridays, uh, just do please consider if there is a way to have this on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday rather than uh, Thursday and Friday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, because similar to IAM Bangalore, where they do the PGPM program, which happens on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Just a suggestion, sir. You can think through this, and then if it works, uh, please do consider. Because we work on the US time shift, and we need to have to support on the Thursday nights and Friday nights. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Shall I go to the next uh, question? Or... Yes. yes, 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 please. Yeah, Justin, you are still there. Justin. Okay. Uh, Saurabh Kumar Ja. Saurabh Kumar Ja. Let's go to the next person. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, Sora, please. Kuma... Sora, please. Kumar Nityanand. Better that one person does. Yeah, Justin, you can go ahead. If you have if you if you want yes, to come in, you evening. can come in. Good evening. Am I audible now? Yes. Uh, great. Unfortunately, I had missed the initial part of the webinar. So my question might be something which you've already addressed. I just wanted to check. Uh, I have, I'm, I'm having a graduation degree from Delhi University. After that, I also have about 11 years of work experience. And I did join MBA from FMS Delhi. But due to the nature of my job, which was traveling, <laughs> I could not complete it. I just managed uh, first year. So now i am not working currently but it's the love to get this mba degree and have my you know widen my horizon i just wanted to check would i be eligible yes yes, yes you are you are all right perfect and is there any maximum age as well no oh that that's great all right thank you so very much i think it's a great initiative which you all have taken thank you and I believe this is being recorded and we would get uh, all the uh, meeting recordings. We will come back to you on that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Jesseline. Akansha, Akansha, can you unmute and ask your question, please? Okay. Okay. Uh, Dipanchi, Dipanchi Ranka, can you unmute and ask your question? Oh, she's gone. Swati, yeah. Swati Singh. Yeah. Swati, Swati Singh, can you ask your unmute and ask your question, please? Mind see. Kumar Nityanan. Kumar Nityanan. Mansi N. Mansi, can you unmute and ask your question? Ah, Kumar, yeah, you can go ahead. Kumar, you can you can ask your question.
ஸ்பெசிபிகலி <laughs> that's a hard one to answer because uh, you know success would not probably in business field do not necessarily require an mba degree and you seem to have some sense of that but uh, if one were to really widen the gamut out of your work uh, and you know understand uh, other fields if you are you know not already doing it program could help that's a way i'll put it got it and the second question that i have is uh, in terms of the um, admission criteria right i know there is some weightage to the test and some weightage to the work experience is it just the years of work experience or also the quality of work experience uh, that yeah so we will consider experience uh, overall uh, both in respect to years and quality of experience okay thank you yeah uh may I request viju viju george can you unmute and come in ask your question please yeah viju yes not there you're there yeah we can move hello yeah. santu vasantu wade hello vasantu wade can hello. you unmute and ask hello. your question please hello ஜிபி <laughs> <laughs> somehow we are not able to hear you out can you be a little louder by any chance uh, either hello yeah biju we are not able to hear you or you can type it out i'll respond tejaswat devi tejaswat tejaswant sorry tejashwant can you come in and ask your question please uh, yeah thank you sir yeah, um... are you able to hear her yes yeah, yeah we can yeah. thank you sir uh, uh, i i have completed diploma in uh, 2007 after 10th and uh, uh, i got selected in campus interviews and i continued into the mnc companies in it and uh, due to lack of opportunity i haven't studied or proceed for the graduation or anything so uh, right now i have 15 years of experience and i have uh, after covid uh, due to this online programs i started uh, pursuing bca in on, in manipal university and this will be completed in the next year so will this be eligible for me to join at least in the next year for this program yes you will be so do i need to complete 3 years after the graduation completion or will the previous 15 years experience will be considered as well. uh oh uh, you should uh, send us a mail to just one we can respond that uh, uh, thinking about it how to respond yeah sure sir sure sure thank you pankaj kumar pankaj kumar can you unmute and ask your question please hi am i audible yes yeah sure good evening sir so uh, just one question is like if someone is interested for um, get assistance after completion of program for the placement and all uh, is there any kind of assistance will be provided by i am um this is something that uh, we had responded so the way we see this is this is a program for who are already working therefore we do not provide the same level of support that we provide for you know the full time programs however the batch and the individually the students are you know 
free to leverage the program learning and the IMA uh, institutional, you know, image and network to further their own career. So if the batch decides to collectively promote the program and, you know, or some individuals decides to reach out to organizations and organize, you know, uh, career opportunities, then they are free to do so. That's the way I'll put it. And one clarification, if my if may I ask, is sure. Is there any difference like postgraduate diploma and the master degree? This program is like like what kind of things is this? We have already uh, mentioned uh, this. This is a as you can see here. We are actually it's a degree granting program. Mm -hmm. uh, so it will award be considered an as a master degree. Yes, yes, yes it will. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Pratik Joshi. Pratik. Yeah. Good evening. I am a retired colonel from the Indian Army with 35 years of experience. Uh, I just want to ask you, am I eligible? You are. Okay. Uh, do I get some kind of a concession as far as fees is concerned or some kind of a concession as far as the entrance exam is concerned? Uh, Pratik, uh, unfortunately, you know, criteria for admission remain the same. Uh, in terms of fee, scholarship, you know, we are we are working on it, but we yeah, cannot commit anything right now. now. Defense is one of the sectors that we are considering. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Deepanchi Ranka. Deepanchi. Good evening, sir. Uh, thank you for this entire session. So I have two queries. Uh, firstly, I am from IT field. I'm into business analytics already. And I'm having a experience of three years as a full time and one year experience as an internship. So my question is, how does this elective courses of decision making of AI, ML and the other uh, technologies does help in my uh, individual learning in business analytics? And second question, sir, is I have a CAT score of 78% uh, of CAT 2023. So should I consider uh, cons uh, taking up the IAT exam? Uh, so I'll answer the first part and my colleague will answer the second part. Uh, on the first part, um, since you are already working as a business analytics professional, uh, most of what you would take away from this program is your knowledge of the business domains and business functions. Uh, I wouldn't really put it as, you know, program focused on analytics. Of course, those who don't have exposure to that field will benefit from these electives. You may also benefit from some electives offered in the analytics domain, but it's not a full-fledged analytics program. Much of the program is focused on core management and business. In that sense, you know, your ability to frame the program, if I, sorry, problems, if I were to put it that way, probably would be richer and better with the program rather than solving the problem technically. I have already responded to a question on, on, on the preference in terms of what test. So we are unable to tell you, you know, which test is preferred for us. We, for us, we look at you know, scores across. Um, if you believe, you know, we can do better uh, through IAT, we would increase that. Yeah. Uh, can we have next question from Priyank? Priyank Kadia. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, thank you very much for giving the chance. And actually, I was on duty, so not able to join full session. So as I come to home, I immediately joined before maybe 15-20 minutes. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, sir, I want to ask, I have done uh, uh, 12 science plus diploma in mechanical engineering. And after that, 10 plus years experience in refinery. So am I eligible for this program or at least I need some uh, graduation like BCom or anything, sir? Yeah, Priyanka, the, the basic criteria is a graduation, unfortunately. Uh, so, okay, sir, it's not like executive MB or like so uh, professionals can join, sir. No, even for our uh, executive MBA, minimum criteria is graduation. Okay, sir, thank you. Saurabh Kumar Ja. Saurabh, Saurabh Kumar Ja, you can unmute and ask your question. Sir, 
<clears throat> so, uh, so last time also I was not able to unmute myself. I was there. So okay. Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. So, no worries, sir. So, uh, since this is the first time that I'm Ahmedabad is offering such a program, and we got to know about it in February, and we are having this uh, question and answer in the month of March, and the application deadline is May 10th, and I just learned that international candidates mandatory need to do, take a GMAT. So the span of time between today and the last date of application, which is 10th of May, is more or less 60 days. Now, registering for GMAT, taking the GMAT, and coming up with the score of GMAT will take some time, sir. So my humble request is if it at all sounds you know rational or is reasonable, if you can extend the deadline by a bit so that we can comfortably take the GMAT. And so that's the only uh, request that I have. Uh, we cannot commit anything you now, Saurabh, but you know, we take your point. Uh, you know, if there are any changes on the, on the, the dates, uh, we, we will announce it in the website. The alternative that you can do is we have the center in Dubai um, where you could really go and take the IIT. That's another option that you can check out. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Saurabh, so, which, which country you are from? You are called, so I'm, you are I'm I'm in I'm Indian, but I am in the Netherlands for past three years. Netherlands, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Salil, Salil, can we can you unmute and ask your question, Salil? Sir, good evening. Salil, no. Yes, sir. Good evening, um, sir. Uh, I have about seventeen years of work ex. I am currently working as a general manager with a large airline, mostly on the commercial and sales side of the business. Um, I uh, till a couple of weeks ago, I was considering the executive MBA uh, program also from IIM Ahmedabad, and uh, recently I got the email about this program being available, which is very exciting. My question is more about seeking guidance rather than clarification. Um, for for senior executives like us who are seeking to go from maybe like like myself from a GM to a vice president level jump in the career later on. Um, what 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 applicability of the program would would suit better? Would it be an executive MBA or would it be a proper two year online MBA like this? I'm a little confused in terms of what would be better. So seek your guidance on that, sir. Uh, Salil, it's hard to comment upon that because the cohort that typically comes to PGPX are you know uh, candidates who have decided that oh let me strive all effort to really you know move up in career and therefore I'm willing to really pay the cost it actually takes, dislocation, losing, quitting job and then coming here. So therefore, you know, these are two different options. Uh, you know, one advantage of this is to self-pace the learning uh, and then, you know, um, gradually look for career options as opposed to PGPX at the end of one year, one has to necessarily find a career. Sir, my, question that, not, uh, sorry, huh? my question was not PGPX. My question was uh, executive MBA uh, versus this one, the online MBA. So both online models, but which one, which, which one offers? Uh... So as a, so I can only comment on the content of the program. In terms of the content of the program, there is no difference. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, only the you know nomenclature is different. There is no difference in the rigor or content or in the learning methods, okay, or so possibly the cohort that you will. Find. He, yeah. he is he is referring to an executive MBA from some other institute, professor. No, 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 sir. Oh, okay. I am MBA. I am Ahmedabad only. Uh, the the okay. other leadership programs that you have. Uh, I was comparing. Yeah, with that. Re residential program, right? The one year program. No, sir. Online. Uh, online. Uh, online. We don't. SMP. Senior oh, management. You... Pro. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. He is no, referring to a senior not... management. Yeah. Uh, those are not degree granting. They are programs. not degree granting programs which are not full time. They are for a short duration uh, program. Uh, this is full fledged and you know deeper and wider. Right, sir. Understood. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Abhinav Thakur. Abhinav. Swati Singh. Suresh, we Swati. can take one last yeah. question and we could be done. And then, yeah. Abhinav. Yeah, sir, I missed out on yeah, sir, I missed out on one uh, like last question. I missed out on question last time. So, uh, like, can you throw some light on bifurcation of marks which should be alloc uh, allocated to say jobs, a uh, job quality, or IMT test and the interviews? How it will be bifurcated among these three? Uh, uh, that is an internal, you know, matter. We are, you know, working on it. Uh, that would be my response now. Okay, sir. thank you, sir. Yeah, one last question. Um, Swati is uh, Swati. You are there. 
Uh, Nitesh Gupta, last uh, this is the last question we'll be taking. Yeah, Nitesh. Yeah, hi, sorry. <laughs> I was unable to <laughs> mute myself. Unmute. Sure, sure. Sure. Okay, Thank please. Uh, yeah, so like I missed the session and I joined during the Q&A. So uh, and uh, like I would like uh, to uh, receive clarification. Uh, like firstly about myself, I uh, I have done B.Tech in computer science and I have around 10 years of experience in the IT industry. And uh, the doubt I have is like, uh, can you please clarify on the class timings that is in the morning and the evening? I saw the slide. It's like uh, there are two timings mentioned for the morning session and one for the evening session. So is it that we can join any one of these in the morning? Uh, um, on weekday sessions, it's uh, strictly in the evening. Only the Sunday session is actually in the morning. Yeah. Okay, so there are two sessions on uh, on the weekdays? One session mostly, but... There could be an extra session. No, week, week days, week days, week sorry, weekdays, two sessions. Yeah, sorry. Weekdays, two sessions. Oh, sorry. Yeah, like weekdays, two sessions. So that, that's like, uh, that's for the duration of 6.45 to 9.30. Like that's two right. sessions. Yeah. Will, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Th yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thanks, everybody. And we'll, we have taken note of all the questions which have come in chat. And uh, we'll certainly get back to you. Uh, thanks for joining everybody, especially people from abroad, irrespective of time zones, they, they managed to uh, come in. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. Any, any questions you have, you can certainly mail us. Further questions you have, you can mail us and we'll be more than glad to answer your questions. Thank you.